Hey everyone. Um, so today we're going to do Q snaps. I'm going to show you how to put the fabric on for those who have no idea how to do it and how to use them. Also, lots of questions about beading. So I'm going to show you how I bead a project. And another little segment on fabric differences, types, and how the different fabrics take the colours. So that's what we're going to do today. So first, Q-snap. This is an 11 by 17. And I got this one out because like last week you'll remember that I said not to um, put your Q-snap these things over the beads because they'll break them. So I've gone with the bigger Q-snap so I'm not going to have to put these the clamp bit on any of the beads. So what I do for those who have never used a Q-snap, put it together is your first trick. They're not that hard because um, when you get them they come all in pieces so you'll figure that out pretty easily and I usually just lay it over and make sure the back I use the back and as a bit of a line as a guide to make sure I've got it straight um, and then just hold on to it now this is where some people use a chucks cloth or a spare bit of fabric um, to put in between the clamp and the frame. I don't, never have, never will. Even if that was a fully stitched project, I would still um, just put the clamp over the stitching because I've never had a problem with it. Um, maybe I will one day and maybe I'll change the way I do it, but I'll let you know how I go with that. So don't be scared of them. I know a lot of people are scared of them because of that reason. Um, I haven't had an issue. With the Q-snaps, um, if you're using a big piece of fabric and got a lot of overflow, that's where your Q-snap covers come in really handy because you can tuck all that into your cover. Um, or if you've got like a massive bit of fabric down here, we've got the pouches that go around the bottom of your frame and they will hold all of the excess fabric in the pouch so it's not exposed, I guess, to dirt and... Um, I don't know, pet hair, smoke, if you smoke, um, things like that. So, and it keeps it out of the way, which is really handy because that can get really annoying. Um, okay, so that's how you use a Q-snap. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Delphine who was asking about this last week. So that's how you use it. And it's completely up to you if you... Um, put anything in between the clamp and the frame. Okay, Everyone. now with beading. Everyone's saying hi. Hi, everyone. Amber's telling me that everyone's saying hi. I can't actually see the screen at the moment, so I'll go back through any questions and answer them a little later. With beading, I found these tiny, tiny little gold needles. I don't know if you can get a good view of it. It might be easier to see it on the black fabric they're really tiny um, if I grab the phone off Amber and Amber and goes and gets the normal needle I use you'll be able to see the difference in the size um, I tried using the peacemakers beading needles and they are really long and really awkward and I didn't like using them um, so I just went on eBay, I think it was, and I found a seller that sold these tiny incy bincy. I might have been actually, um, I got them from Donna at, um, um, I can't remember her shop's names now, but you, you know Donna. Everyone knows Donna. Okay, so that is the difference. It's, it's, it is quite a bit smaller, and that's a um, Bowen 26 needle. So it's a little bit smaller. But the eye of the needle is still good. You can still um, you can still quite easily put it through, like put your cotton through. I don't know if I'm going to get a good um, a good view of that. So yeah, so that's what I use to bead because it's much easier. Okay, um, of course I've got my this needle minder actually 
came from Christine at, I can't remember, someone give me a hint, needle minders from Christine in Australia. Um, someone will put it down the bottom. I should know all this. I just, as soon as I get onto live, I can't remember anything. But oh, she, these are like little guitar picks and she had a whole series of Guns and Roses, so I've got Slash, Duff, Axel, The Band, and a group shot all on little guitar pick needle minders. Because as everyone knows, I'm an absolute Guns and Roses freak. So, you just need to, I'm going to give this back to Amber, the camera. So I'm just going to put my needle minder on because I need to put my needle down up quite a bit with these. Now, these silvery beads are bead number 42010 and they are the Mill Hill brand. And this little container I've got came out of this bead box that everyone went absolutely nuts about. Um, apparently the American and UK girls can get it from Amazon, but us Aussies, we couldn't. I found mine, and it was about $50 on a, I think it was the Polly McClay. It's a Polly McClay website I found this on. And I looked the other day, and she doesn't have them listed anymore. So I don't know if that's because these were so expensive and Spotlight bought out their own brand, and I think Spotlight one is only $20. So if you're looking for bead storage... These are great, and these they're like little, um, little, the lids just kind of flip open like that, and I usually get my Tacky Bob, I don't know if anybody has seen or didn't know what these are, they're like a little CD cover, and they've got little sticky bits on both sides, and you just pour your beads on there, just a few, we won't go too many, and they actually stick to that. So if you have any little accidents, um, if you've got little kids that going to come up and, you know, you know what kids are like, they just don't care. They come up and knock everything out of your hand or a cat. Cats don't care either. That These beads are not going to go anywhere. See that? That's upside down. The beads are not going to fall off. You're not going to lose them. They're there because they're expensive little buggers. So you don't want to keep losing them. So that is my bead storage i'm gonna have to find another one soon but i don't know if i'll go for this expensive brand again i think i'm going to go to spotlight and just get theirs because it's going to be easier for me to get my hands on them it seems um another question with beading is do you use the same color thread as the fabric or do you use the same color thread as the bead um i like to use the same color thread as the bead except for when that bead is like a clear bead like these ones I have been using the same color thread as the fabric which is black so for these clear beads I'm using DMC 310 to put them on the little bits of color in here in the design I'm using DMC the variegated 115 um, oh no sorry that's not it it's the <laughs> DMC 107 that's all the little bits and this darker one the 115 is actually going to go to on the pattern like the garter belt attachments of the corset so they'll be a little bit darker and just a little stand out a little bit more so that's what I'm doing with those so if I get the thread, I'm going to show you how I bead. Um, where did the needle go? Great. I think I put it on here and then I lifted it up, didn't I? Okay, so here it is. Just, just, just tragedy nearly occurred. We nearly lost the needle. Oh, my God, I hate that. <laughs> Um, okay, so with this, I'm doing this on 28 count 
plain black fabric Jobelin, which is on my site. Um, I didn't, I just thought it would look really stunning on a just a really black, black um, background. And as you know, that my normal fabrics with the dyes, they don't come out a solid, intense black. They are very mottled and sometimes it comes out more charcoal than black. So I wanted a solid black background for this. But obviously, that's a really personal choice. You could do whatever you wanted with these type of things. Just guess it just depends on the beads. And I thought that this colour bead would stand out better um, on black fabric. So I'm using two strands of thread. And of course, I said to you this eye was really easy to thread, but it's been squished. I have to get my nail in there. Um, and I can't thread it. So, I should have done this earlier. Should have got prepared earlier. Um, I can't even see. Don't me do it. The hole. Okay. Go get me the other needle, Amber. I'm going to get Amber to get me another one because that one's been What's the normal squashed. One? So, while she's doing that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Every video, there's always been a little, oh my God, moment. This is the one for this one. Um, the tacky bobs are fantastic. And while we're doing that, I'll just go back over the comments and see if there's any um, questions. Hi, Belinda. Hi, Jean. Um, if you're having problems with the live stream, um, I've been told to don't go through the, um, the app the groups app for Facebook, just use Safari or the Facebook app. Um, hi, Joel. You should be here on the other side of the camera. Hi, Danny. Hi, Christine. <laughs> um, yeah, Ellie, I don't know what's happened. That needle, I couldn't even see the eye of it. So I think I've squished it last time I used it um, because they are very soft to use. Um, needle minder obsession thank you Karen that's who I got the little um, guitar pick needle minders from and um, she's got heaps of other stuff it's really good if you're looking for a needle minder person in Australia um, hi Beth hi Julie any thoughts on the use of tacky bob for beading Julie I love it and I can't I'm too scared to not have it because the first time I started beading, I um, didn't have a tacky bob and I was trying to get the beads out of the little container that they were in and it, it's like the most awkwardest thing in the world. And then someone, I think maybe it was Kim Howe mentioned to me, um, I think she might have even been the one to ask me to get it, to get it in with a tacky bob. And they are so cool. And every single one comes with a different little cover on it. So they're really cool. Um, yeah, so I think Ro I had a conversation with Robin McFarlane about them as well. And she said the only thing not to do is don't leave your beads in there when you've finished that colour. Because um, it can't. the sticky stuff that's on this bottom part can take some of the paint um, or the colour off the beads if you leave them in there for too long. So once you finish with that bead and that colour, put them back in your little storage container. Um, don't leave them in there. Hi, Kim. Okay, I have four for all my mirror beads. Yeah, I've got about three um, different ones with different projects at the moment as well. So... Okay, I'm going to give the phone back to Amber and let's try this, getting this threaded again. You know what I did? I forgot the light. That's why I'm having problems because I'm getting old and my eyes don't work as good anymore. Um, knots. I... Although I don't use knots when I'm stitching normal cross stitch, I do use knots when I'm beading because you need to anchor 
your thread. I mean, other people might have another way of doing it. This is, like, again, this is not the wrong way, the right way. This is just the way I do it. Um, so I just put a little knot in there to make sure that it's not going to slip through and I don't lose my bead. This is how easy it is. You just get your needle. And I don't know if this needle is going to take go through that bead. That's why I needed the smaller bead. The smaller needle, okay. That's that's why you need a smaller needle. I'm using the number four, like the beads that start with the number four. That is a tiny, tiny needle, and that bead won't go over the eye of the needle. So that is why you need to find um, a needle that the beads will actually go over the eye of the needle. So size 20... Six bowens. I generally, um, I generally have a bit of success with them, um, but the twenty. Oh no, the twenty-eight. Sorry, not the twenty-six. But um, anything larger than that, no, I don't have set. Okay, I got it. I got it threaded without a great big light over my shoulder. So that's pretty much it. You pick, that's how you get your bead. It doesn't move around. It doesn't escape. Um, actually, I don't even need it yet because I've got to go through the, um, <laughs> I've got to go through the fabric first. So, um, yeah, it wouldn't be a video if I didn't make a heap of mistakes, Amber, so don't worry. Keeping it real, keeping it real, people. <laughs> so now I've got to thread it again. Um, yeah, so Tacky Bob, I've actually um, got a whole heap of back orders for them at the moment because in that last sale I had, I could not believe how many Tacky Bobs went. They were um, really popular. And, and Thread Heaven, if anybody... Um, if anybody wanted to know about Thread Heaven, because that's another magical little um, tool there is out there. Okay, so I got so excited about the needle and thread that I don't even know where we're going to start. So this is what I've done. So I've got it the right way. Um, I will go down to just under this bit here. And on the pattern, it's another little... I'll just do those first four symbols on there so we're not. you don't have to sit here and watch me stitch. Now, again, with beads, it's like stitching two over two. Um, so I've got two strands just for strength so the beads don't um, pull through. So I need to go down to... Um, and I really need light. See, that's a good trick with um, black fabric. Have a lot of light behind you or a white towel um, or a white towel on your lap. Um, and you can see the holes much better. If you've got a stand that's got like an arm on it, that's even better. So let's just, I've got to count down. One, two. There was two spaces between. I'm going to come up there. Um, okay, so now you just grab your tacky bob, which I usually just kind of have it sitting there. Um, and then you can just grab a bead like that. Just make sure every now and then you're going to get one that isn't even going to go over the tiniest needle you can find. You just have to, I usually just sit them up in a corner and so I know not to even try to pick them up again because they're not going to work. Um, so, so you go over two instead of over one. And it's pretty much just a half stitch and you've anchored it down. That's, that's all I do. Um, some people, I think, they do a cross through the bead just for extra protection. I don't. I just go... Um, I just go half stitch with the double thread. That's it. Um, another thing I was looking up the other day because there's so many different styles of stitches. Like I say half stitch 
there's tent stitch, continental stitch. Um, I've only actually ever done one project with tent stitch. I don't even know if it's tent stitch. I think it actually might be continental stitch because it wasn't started by me. Um, so I'm no expert in that I just use this method for beading. Otherwise, with cross stitching, I am a full cross person. Um, and the only reason I'm sticking with tent stitch with the other one is because it was started like that. So that's pretty much how you get your beading. Um, and you just neaten it up. Don't pull it too tight because that's when you get your beads won't sit properly. Um, there's, I mean, it's really that easy. And I am no pro on beading, trust me. I only started not long, long ago doing mirabilias and they were the first things really that I'd beaded in a really long time. Um, I do have some really old finished projects that I um, have finished that have beads on them, but they were done when Amber was a newborn baby and I used to get up through the night after a feed with Amber. I could never go back to sleep, so I used to cross-stitch. Um, that's that's where it all started. Um, thank me. So you can thank Amber for that. Um, so that is a little rundown of beading. I reckon you should all give it a go. And I think you should all pick a design that you really like. And I mean an ink circles or an Alessandra Adelaide, something really cool. And mix it up a little bit. Put some, you know, put some stitching in there and, and but do the majority of your work in beads. Um, there's a Facebook, a Facebook group for um, stitching with beads as well. I'm in that one as well because and it's really good. Like the things that people are doing in there are amazing. So that's st the stitching with beads and the Q snap. And I've showed you the tacky bob and some bead storage. I know um, there's other ways of storing beads. There's the little round containers, which I started using and I got rid of them real quick because these are much better um, to use. I don't really like the little round containers now. Like with everything I do, I start out with something and before long I've changed it. I change things all the time. Now to some exciting stuff that you will all love. I'm going to move this out of the way um, because I'm going to take the camera from Amber now because she wants to go eat. So, and Chris is coming home. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to do some fabrics. But I'm going to just go back and see what you have said. Um, just go back through the comments. Hi to everyone that said hi. Does Tacky Bob ever die? I'm sure they do at some point, Liz. I'm sure the stickiness will wear out at some point. I've had mine going for a couple of years now and haven't had an issue yet. But I would say they do eventually. But they probably have a good couple of years in them. Um, Beth, are they hard to get off the back, off the tacky bob? No. As you saw when I did it, you just put your needle in and it picks straight up. It just stops them from flying everywhere if you have a big mess or a cat or a dog or a kid or you, um, you accidentally forget that you've got this tub of beads sitting on your lap and you lift your you project up and you send beads flying. That's really all it's for. It's really, really handy little thing to have. Um, and they're really easy to get back into your container. I just use my fingernail or the needle to scrape them back into the container. But with the beads that have got the colour on them, um, like the matte beads, I, I try to be really careful with them because I don't want to remove the, the paint or the dye from the beads, from those. Um... Sorry, Taryn, I don't know what's going on. It's just a live feed through Facebook. Try the Facebook app. That's what I use um, instead of Safari maybe or try Safari instead of the app. Um, is Thread Heaven a must, Beth Daniels Jones? No, it's not a must. I use it when I'm stitching with one thread over one on 28 count Lugana because I find, and this, this is actually a good lead into the fabrics, I find plain 28 count Lugana a very rough fabric on thread. 
especially when you're stitching over one, it can shred the thread. Um, I more often than not have the threads broken. Just say I've got a metre of thread and I'm stitching with it, um, the thread will have broken before I've even got halfway through that, that thread. So Thread Heaven is actually really good to run your thread through to stop breakage. And they say it stops with knotting, but I'm sorry. I get knots all the time. Um, it just makes them easier to undo, but it doesn't stop knotting. Um, it's supposed to stop um, tangling and all that, but I think that's just a very personal way of stitching, who, how you stitch. If you're going to get tangles, knots, it depends on how, how long you cut your thread. I cut mine quite long, so I'm prone to knotting and, and that. I don't really like working with short lengths of thread. Um, so, and it, yeah, as Kim said, it's really, really super good for metallics. It keeps them together, as you know, that when you cut the end of a metallic, it frays and it's so hard to put it through the eye of a needle um, and one little bit will come loose as you pull it through a hole and it's all stuck at the back. So it does help with metallics. Um, is the funky lizard in the background a cross-stitch chart? No, that is a present I got from Shelley from Tilton Crafts. I've been asked this a few times. For Christmas a couple of years ago, I've got to put it in a frame, but I always have it. And I'll just go down and see if you can see it. I always have it in my office. I wish I knew who the artist was because I'd love to do that as a cross stitch. But I do have one similar on my site by... Jenny Wood, and it's called um, Iguana, I think. But have a look under Jenny Wood, and there's one very, very similar to that already on my site with the same stained glass type um, pattern as the seahorse has got. So there is something similar. Um, Ali, I've never used Thread Heaven, never needed to. I, if you're a mirabilia stitcher, you probably haven't really had the need. Um, if you're two over two stitchy, you probably haven't really had the need. I find stitching on opal fabrics and plain Lugana over one, that's when I need my thread heaven. Um, and it really stop. it's just to stop the breakage. It comes, your thread comes through the fabric really smoothly. Um, I love it. And yeah, so I use it all the time. So going into fabrics and how colours dye differently. So I've got about four different colours here with on different types of fabric. Um, just for an example, because um, a lot of the other fabrics in the studio session box are mist dyes. They're not, so these are the ones I could find that are, and there's, they're not mist dyes, they're perfectly fine, but they're gonna be in the studio session sale um, as over dyes. What happened with these is they, they're not fabrics that have been sent back or anything. They're, when I get to the end of um, a bolt of fabric and there's not enough to wrap back up on the cardboard bolt middle bit, I'll cut them to size and have a whole heap of spare um, size fabrics around. Um, so that's that's what they are. They, they were spares and as we get closer to a studio session sale, the last dye session, I try and do a whole heap of extra fabrics in colours as I'm dyeing orders. So if there's a, um, if I've got, uh, at the moment I've got a bag full of about 20 undyed perfect size fabrics that are overlock stitched ready to go. So if I don't get any orders for them, um, the next time I die, I'll chuck a whole heap of them in with the dyes I'm dying for orders and then they'll go into the studio session sale. Um, so, okay, the first colour I found in my pile of fabrics, and I'm going to turn the camera around now so you can see, is Moody Blues. Um, and it's the camera's actually giving it a pretty good representation of the actual true colour which is really good because photos don't often do that. Um, okay these two here 
are on 28 count Nagana. They're both the same size. Um, so that's what Moody Blues looks like on 28 count Nagana. Now, if you go over here, this is on um, 32 count plain Belfast. So as you can see, it's a massive difference. And I, if you watched last week, you will remember me saying about the difference between Belfast and um, even weaves, like the linen and even weave. The linens dye absolutely beautifully. Even the plain fabrics and the opals, they dye so much more intense, as you can see the difference, um, than the even weaves. Um, so... It's really, I guess, up to you if you want to give linen a go. Um, if you like linen, whether you want to try it out. Um, I always say to people, the best thing to do is give it a go. Um, and really think, I guess, think about um, what you're stitching. Um, if you've picked a colour, let's just say I've got Kim Howe says, okay, I want a colour. I want moody blues for one of my mermaids that I'm stitching from Mirabilia, but I would ask her how intense does she want the background? Does she want it a very mild background or does she want it full on intense background? And, and if she minds stitching on linen or she prefers even weave, um, because then that will give you an idea of the actual colour of the fabric when you get it so that that's a really good um, comparison for those two so um, yeah I have usually don't stitch on linen alley and I started one not long ago on an ice dye that was a massive mist dye from a wholesaler that put a big order in for ice dyes and I the first ice dye that ever mist dyed because they don't usually do it um, so I started stitching on it because I thought it was too nice to let go. Um, and I didn't mind it. Like after all the, I'd heard a lot of people say, no, if you're an even, if you're an even weave stitcher, you're not going to like linen. But to me, didn't really matter. Now this is yesterday's and there's another really good comparison of how different and how intense the colors can be depending on the fabric you've ordered. This one here is um, 32 count Belfast, again, linen. Um, this one is 20 count Ada. This one is 16 count Ada. And that is either 16 or 18 count Ada. Can't really tell without my oh, actually I think that's 16 and that's 18 so as you can see there's a really big difference in um, the Belfast and even the Aders like the 20 count died darker than the 18 and the 16 so there's and 14 count Ada dies very very lightly um, it doesn't die as intense as 18 count or 16 count. So there's a difference there as well. Um, the opals in the 18 count um, opal and the 14 count opal die really nicely. Um, the On the website, if you have a look at Kingmaker, um, that's an 18 count opal. So that that gives you that's a very dies very intense so the ada opals die really really nicely hi joel you should be cleaning up for me or something instead of watching my video <laughs> um okay here is sorcerer another really popular color but it's another color that is really um dies really differently on different fabrics this here is opal linen and I think this is 28 count opal uh yeah 28 count cashel opal the 32 count Belfast dies even darker than that it dies more like that darker patch there 
um, all over and I get more mottling with the 28 count. So that's the 28 count opal cashel. And this is 18 count Ada. So that dyes nice and dark. And this one is also 18 count Ada. So actually this one might be 16. Let me just have a look. Yeah, I think that's 16 count. That's 16 count, that's 18 count. So again, there is a difference. And 14 count Ada would actually dye even lighter than that. Um, so, and your um, 28 count Lugana Opal would dye about the colour of the lightest part of this. So it dyes very lightly on the Lugana Opal. Um, okay, so that is that. Um, and here is Into the Mystic. I've got a couple of these. One is on 28 count... Cashel Opal and the other one is on 14 count Opal Ada. So as you can see the Opal Adas do dye a lot nicer than the plain fabrics. If that was on plain 14 count Ada it would be the, like the blue and that purple would be a lot lighter. Um, but in the Opals they come out absolutely beautiful. Um, any idea why they dye so differently? I think it's got to do with the cotton to rayon um, percentage in the fabrics and the thickness of the fabrics. And because the fabrics all feel completely different in thickness. And so I just think it's weights, the weight of the fabric and the type of fabric. I just think it's just they're all very, very different. Like even 22 count Hardanger um, is completely different to Ada. It just feels really smooth. Um, I love 22 count. Um, I'm not a big fan of Ada anymore, even though I am stitching a few projects on Ada. And that's purely because I wanted the size. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's one of those things. So that is, gives you an idea of how different the colors can be on different types of fabric another thing i want to talk about for the studio session sale is the card maker packs um the first few i put out i started putting the measurements but because i've got so bloody many of them i stopped i just put card pack make um card pack number and whatever the fabric was so this is both 28 count opal um as you can see they're not little tiny squares and this is why i think a lot of people weren't real interested in them they're actually great big long lengths of fabric see that's that one it's probably about half a meter long um it's just little scraps of fabric so you've got to make um like things like cards bookmarks things like that and that one so there's usually two different pieces two different colors so um and i this studio session sale there's heaps and heaps of them so that's what the card maker packs are so if you were ever wondering and if i don't put the measurements up you've got an idea now of the size of the actual two pieces of fabric that you're getting so it's like that colour cascade banner. That's pretty much done on a card maker, um, a piece from a card maker's pack. So they're quite large. They're not, you could do a lot with them. It doesn't have to be cards. You could do a table runner, I guess, or a, like a placemat, bookmarks, um, whatever you like. Okay, I'm going to go over here. This right here is all of the studio session pieces so I'm not going to go through all of them but I'm just going to give you an idea of what is going to be up for offer and as I said before some of the pieces are they're not missed eyes they're perfectly good pieces of fabric in regular colors of mine that I've just dyed extras of when I've been dyeing orders um, it just you know some people don't want to miss dye they might want to grab themselves a 
perfectly good piece of fabric with nothing wrong with it. Um, I've got um, mist eyes. Now this is, I remember this was for Christine and it was an iced eye order. And again, it was a, um, I don't have very many mist eyes with iced eyes because pretty much impossible. But for some reason, every now and then I do. It's just, there wasn't enough color in it. Um, I didn't think it deserved to go out to her. So I let her know that I had a mist eye and I did her another one, which ended up being Autumn Carnival. That's how Autumn Carnival came about, was um, from the colors that Christine chose for her eye dye. So there you go, Christine, you're famous now. <laughs> um, this is, oh, I'm actually glad this is in here because this is something I wanted to talk to you all about with some of the colors are, they do work on Ada, like this is one of the main ones. This is a color which is Wicked Garden. It's a massive 26 by 36 piece. And it does work on Ada, but every now and then I get these little marks. And it only ever happens with Ada. And it's just not, um, it's not something that, to me, that's an imperfection. Um, so I let the girl know that ordered it and it was a sale order. So she had to wait quite a long time because, of course, I ran out of 18 count. Um, that I'd had a missed eye. Like these little marks, um, that's what really turned me off this one. And I'm just not, it's not perfect, so I can't send it out. Um, so these are the sort of things you're getting in the studio session sale. Now, as you can see, that's not that far out from the edge. So, and you're probably going to stitch over those little, um, those little marks because they're pretty much right in the middle. So if you're doing a fully stitched project, that's not really going to matter to you. Um, yeah, but that, these are the sort of things that are in the studio session, the studio session piles. Um, that's why they're in there. So that's with Ada and I'm... It's kind of getting to the point where I'm like, I think I might take Ada off as an option for Secret Journey and Wicked Garden because it's happening two or three times before I get a perfect one and I'm wasting a lot of fabric. Um, yeah, so that's just something that I'm thinking about and that's why if you've ordered it and I've said, I've sent you a note saying, look, it's not perfect. I'm going to do it again. That's probably why. Um, another reason that fabrics go into the studio session. These, I don't know what's going on. And I don't, I think it's just that I didn't use enough dye maybe. But it happens all the time. Or maybe the fabric wasn't wet enough. Um, but you get these like marks all through. This was a monthly melody, a monthly mystery. So... There was a couple of girls that I let know that I had really major mist eyes with their monthly mystery. And it was, again, it was only Ada that did it. So I think this is why some dyes you're going to get. There's some fabrics when we bring out colours that are only available on some fabrics because they, the fabric just doesn't take that dye very well. Okay, here's another example of a reason why something's gone into a studio session sale. This was Fairies Wear Boots. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Until it got washed. And my daughter, I think it was, put it in a basket wet with other colors and the other darker colors were still so wet they touched this sorry i just dropped out are we back um it rubbed off onto this fabric so that's another example of okay how does the monthly melodies work I haven't done a monthly melody for 
quite a while now because I decided to do the monthly mysteries. The monthly melodies, which I probably don't think I'm going to bring back, um, they were, I put two pictures up of two different types of fabric and if you liked them you could order them um that's how they worked it was a order <coughs> by site basis um am i still live or did that completely cut me off i'm not sure can someone say something if you can hear me because i don't know because it just come up on my phone that i got cut off Okay, cool. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> um, okay, so the monthly mysteries are now more like a Fabric of the Month Club. So you don't know what you're going to get. You just tell me what size fabric, what type of fabric you want. Um, and you will get a surprise in the mail. It's like a, a traditional Fabric of the Month Club that everybody else does. Um, so that's how it works with that um i use with the sale of course i got a little bit behind in a couple um at the moment there's only a couple of from august that i need to get out but that's due to um fabric shortage and i had to get all those sale orders out so i'm just put another big order in for fabric and then i should be back on track with um stock having enough and not running out so quickly so this box as you can see it's about the size of an esky is absolutely chock a block full of um, different types, sizes, dyes, um, experiments like this. I love this. This is, I see, this is another color which anyone who's got it will know that is not even f like filming the right color. It's, um, I'm trying to get it to like put it up against something where it'll it's really orange and as you can see from when I put it on the table it turns ready but it's not it's actually a really cool orange color so that's another thing this is the hardest thing we have to do is to get accurate photos of the colors um, so yeah so this is what you are all got to look forward to so there's another couple that had um were in that same basket this is all from that same basket and it was the first time i'd asked my daughter to help me um wash fabrics she knows now and i'm so sorry to the people who had to then wait for these to be redone but um they were thrown all in a basket all together the light colors and then the dark colors were put on top of them and as you can see they dripped and this is what we mean by colors not being color fast like the dark dark purples um and the dark blues and the reds they still run even after we put them through the washing process they still run so if you want to wash fabrics, do it when you get them. Do it before you start stitching. But these light colours, you shouldn't have any runoff with them after you've stitched. Only the really, really dark colours. Um, is that the one Christine is stitching her queen on? Yes, Christine got a fantastic photo of that fabric. Um, that, that was the same colour. I've got... A few more ice dyes in here that um, I chucked in with other ice dyes while they were being done for the studio session sale. Um, so they are in there. This was one that Tracy Clifford had asked me to experiment. She wanted Kingmaker. Now this is on Jobelin, 28 count Jobelin. Kingmaker, but with the dark bits of Red is the Rose. Um, so we did that and this, I don't know what happened, but it, it's like all these lines come through. I mean, it might be cool effect for something else, but not exactly what she wanted to use for. So she loves the color, but I just have to dye it again without trying to get with no, none of these lines 
through it. So if you see this one in the studio session sale, that's what that one's about. Come out really, the colour's great. It's just all these weird lines as it was scrunched up or folded up and it, the dye actually like got into all the lines and stuck stayed there. So um, another thing I've done is I get confused when I'm dying orders, which, hey, I'm human. This is another big piece. It's 28 count Legato. Um, another 26 by 36 piece, 28 count Lugana, Islands of Avalon. I have no idea why I dyed it. I don't know. It wasn't on order. Um, I got, yeah, I'm really confused with that one because I think it was meant to be another colour. Um, but I dyed it two pieces of this for the same person. And I think that's, I think I actually printed out their order twice because I've done that a couple of times as well and I've cut them and I've dyed them and then I've realized I've done the same thing twice so that's another reason you get um, if I don't get any orders for this color which I haven't since I've dyed it for that particular fabric um, like that if I got an order right now for 26 count Islands of Avalon, 20, um, 26 by 36, 28 count Lagana, that would go straight away because I've got it. It's pre-dyed, it's done, ready to go. But if I don't, it goes in the studio session sale. Um, yeah, thanks, Ali. You can laugh. <laughs> See, totally human, totally blonde. I, um, Everybody knows that's ever contacted me, knows that I'm the first to laugh at myself. And I'll tell you when I've stuffed up, um, if I, I will send you an email and say, I've completely stuffed up your order. I've dyed it on the wrong size. I've dyed it on the wrong fabric. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe it's a one o'clock in the morning thing that I've tried to do it. Who knows? Um, so these are all reasons why you get, um, studio session pieces and some experiments. Like I just try out different methods, different colors together, using up dyes, that I've made up um, on these type of fabrics and just chuck them together and see how colours look together. Um, so this is what you're getting. Um, you're getting a lot of one-offs. There's colours in here that aren't regular colours. They're experiments. I've tried um, colours together. I don't know what they've, how they'd work, so let's give it a go. Um, yeah, so that's what you're getting in these sales. So there's a lot in here. Um, there's a couple of returns. Again, I stuffed up, sent it out, sent completely the wrong thing. So they've been good enough to send it back and I send out the right one. Um, that's like this. Um, this was a lay-by and I didn't notice when I actually ironed it and packed it. And when she completed her lay-by, I went over it because I like to go over everything and if I think you know sometimes you might get a fabric that has a little um mark on it or uh, like a dye spot but if it's up near the edge um I don't tend to worry about it too much because it's not going to be in your stitching if you're not stitching a full stitched chart um, so you might get one every now and then, but things like this, which is pretty much in the middle. And sometimes my daughters will iron for me and they don't really understand um, or know what a, a you know imperfection or a missed eye is. They think everything looks great. Um, apart from the really obvious ones, you know, that they go, oh, this looks terrible, mum. And I'm like, yeah, it's a missed eye. Just we'll chuck that one and start again. But yeah, so that had that mark on it. So that's why that one didn't go. I actually let her know that I found a imperfection in it. I'm going to redo it and I'll send that on when it's done. But I sent her the rest of her lay-by. Um, so that is that. That's all the studio session fabrics and that's where they are. And I pretty much keep going until that gets full 
Um, it, like as you know, it used to be every second month. Um, we used to do studio session sales. Now, because of um, it takes me so long to get past all the regular sales we have, it's now pretty much when this box gets full. So yeah, so when you see the studio session album, there's going to be a lot of different. Um, there's going to be dies that have nothing wrong with them. Perfect. And there's stuff that's got imperfections, there's stuff that may be cut a little bit too small, or when it's gone through the dye process, it's shrunk so much that it's so obviously too small, I can't send it, um, which happens. Um, so that is all of that. Was there anything else anybody wanted to have a look at or wanted to talk about while I'm here before... Because that was a pretty short video, I think. I don't know. I don't even know how long we've been going for. So, I'll await your questions. No? Nobody? Um, okay, I'm going to turn it back around. Okay, so that is that. Um, next week... I don't know what to talk about, so you need to give me ideas again. Um, I, I do think of things through the week as people um, as people ask me questions through the week. Um, there was a question that got asked the other day, and do you think I can remember? I can't remember, so I need to start writing it down. <laughs> um, yeah. Top right that top right piece what colour um, this one hang on I'll this one here um, this one is into the mystic and that is on 14 count opal but with into the mystic you're pretty safe with whatever fabric you choose as there's not a great deal of variation in that one um, between fabrics the major major colors that are really um, that come out very differently um, would be Kingmaker the picture on the website is on 18 count opal and it goes so intense on those opal aiders but it's not as intense on normal even weave opals and it's even lighter on um other fabrics so i was going to say that's one there but that's not that was one of the um that was one of the monthly the monthly mysteries um see that that there is a mist eye of kingmaker on 28 count lugana um it's too light on this fabric but that's not far off watch it does come out a little bit darker when it's dyed properly, but yeah, that's not far off what it's like. So that's that's a big difference. Um, so someone asked what colour your banner is stitched on. That is um, a mist dye again. That was a mist dye, and it was a mist dye of whole lot of love. It came out too pink, as you know, whole lot of love's more bluey purple. And this came out really, really pink for some reason. Um, so that was a mist eye and I really liked it. So that is why I have stitched that on it. And Sarah Payne from Pain Free Crafts, because I wasn't charting at the time I did this, she made up the chart for me and she got me to pick the font that I liked. And I did it, if I'll take you down really close... Can you see the gold cord on as a border? I use the gold um, chronic cord to outline or backstitch every single letter. So that's what you can do with those card maker packs. You could do names, verses. You could just muck around with them. Um, 
the cheapest chips, usually the, the ones with Ada in them are like $4 or $6 for two big pieces of fabric. Um, and this, that just gives you an idea of what you can do. Um, rather, I mean, you know, they're really handy to do those little projects that'll keep you going between the big projects um, if you want a few finishes. Um, and they, what I do with those is sometimes I just dye them the colour, whatever colour I've got handy. Sometimes I chuck a few different colours on them just for an experiment to see what happened. Um, so yeah, you could get all different colours with those. And I like to mix them up a bit. So I'll put two different colours, like completely different colours in a pack. Sometimes you'll get two different counts of fabric. You might get a 14 count and a 16 count or a 16 count and an 18 count. Um, sometimes they might be the same they're just all mixed up but you'll know in the heading when I put it up in the studio session sale in the album um, what to do with it so that that's that um, yeah so what did you think of the beading was that enough for you guys to Let's see if I can get down close um, Sample packs. Oh, that's a good question, Danny, because I get asked about this all the time. The sample packs are not um, not a sample of colours. They are a sample of the count of fabric. So I've got a, two different packs. One is 18 count, 22 count, and 20, no, 18, 20, and 22. And the other pack is 25, 28, and 32. What they are is a small book size pieces of fabric. Um, they've got nothing to do with my colours. So if you're thinking they're samples of the colours that I do, they're not. They're purely for you to have a stitch, to stitch on to see if you like that counter fabric. So for example, if you've only ever stitched on 14 count Ada and you want to try... 22 count to see if you like it you can order that pack and it'll have the 18 count the 20 count and the 22 count fabric in it sometimes the 20 count will be Lugana um, which I actually think is a lot easier to see than the Ada um, if you if you wanted to try that so um, and if you wanted to go from Ada right up to 28 count Lugana then you just buy the other sample pack and it'll have just practice stitching on it, see if you can handle it, see if your eyes can adjust to it because more often than not, once you do a few rows of stitching, you'll find that you might hate it instantly um, and can't deal with it, but keep stitching on it and give yourself a go and you'll adjust to it really quickly. Um, so that's what the sample packs are. So they're really handy and I think they're $5. I think they're $5 on the, um, on the website. Um, so they're not expensive for you to have a play and it's it's like you'd rather pay five dollars for some small pieces of fabric before you commit to a large piece of fabric and then find out that you hate that count um, which I've had happen before I had a lady that that bought uh, I can't I think she bought 32 count fabric and her, where her intention was to stitch over two and when she got it she hated it and she wanted to send it back and unfortunately that's not a reason I'll take a return or a refund um, because that's not my fault if you don't like the count that you're stitching on um, so five bucks on a sample packs the way to go um, yeah so she and she, originally she was stitching on I think 20 count so she went way above what was her norm so of course it was and it's I can't I don't I have not attempted 32 count yet um, I don't even know if I ever will because it's scary to me um, so yeah so just that's that's what they're all about they just be wary of that um, yeah so you guys need to think of things for next week I'm sure things will come up through the week. I am going, I know I said I was going to do the studio session sale this weekend, but I don't know if some of you know I had a really bad back um, the last week and I really had to rest it. So this week I've taken it really easy, apart from the 500 parcels I sent out. Um, um, so 
I I let it go this weekend. I just thought I'll catch up on some housework and do that kind of stuff. And I will do the studio session sale next weekend. So it's I think I might move it to the beginning of the month month rather than the end of the month because the end of the month for me is a busy time. Um, okay, Ali, it's not much different. I might give it a go one day. It just depend. I guess it depends on the size of the design, doesn't it? Um, whether it'll fit on an 18 by 26 or you had to go one higher. So, yeah, might be something I'll look into, but I'm not real keen on it yet. I'll take my hats off to those who do. I don't even think I met someone that stitched on 32 count over one and I was like, oh, my God, I thought 28 count was bad, which I do all the time. Um, so that, that's that. So I will put up a notice in the group about the studio session sale when I actually make my mind up and decide on it. I just have to make sure I've got nothing going on next weekend or through the week that's going to put me out. Um, that's, that's that. I'm pretty sure that most people now, if you don't have your order by now, you should next week that I sent out through the week. Australia Post is all over the place at the moment. I've got stuff that got to Melbourne the next day and I've got stuff that's still waiting. Queensland is still waiting. Like... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they work. All I know is I sent it and the truck driver hated me. So, <laughs> but yeah, so I will um, yay poor again if I win. <laughs> okay, Kim. Um, I think your mum more often than not benefits from the studio session sales, doesn't she? Um, I think you bid for her, which is really nice. It's really good. Um, so next week I might even talk about threads, different threads, um, variegated threads, silk threads, the Threadworks threads. Um, if you've never seen them, we'll do a video on them and you can have a, it'll give you an idea of what you um, might want to try that you've never tried before. So... I think I will leave it there. I don't know how long we've gone for. Must be close to an hour. I don't know. But um, my battery hasn't told me it's going to die yet, which is good. So we can't be too far gone. <laughs> so I will leave it there. And if you've just joined, you can watch the whole thing again. Um, and it may be uploaded to the YouTube channel it just depends like I said I'm not going to upload every single video to YouTube because I want this to be um, uh, a little bit um, unique to the group as well for people only in the group and another idea I had was every maybe starting with the next video I'm going to give a code out for the website so the only people that will know other people that watch the video and they be a discount on something. I don't know what it'll be. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe if we do thread a video about threads next week, we'll make a discount just for you guys who watch on threads. Okay, May and how does the studio sales work? Set price or auction style? Everything is a set price, but everybody comes along on. I will put the album up on a Friday. And it stays up all weekend, so everybody has a chance to get their name on a piece of fabric if they really want it. And on the Monday, I will pick one name out of all of those who put their name down and they then have the opportunity to buy that piece of fabric. Um, that's how it works. So it's not a first in, first serve, so if you don't get in first that's fine. You might not even get on till Sunday and you still have a chance to win it because your name, just put your name down. And like I said last week, put your name down on more than one if you really like stuff because the chances of your name being called for more than one are very slim. Um, if you do win more than one, if your name does get called out for more than one, I will give you the opportunity to say, I, I only want one. I don't want all of them. Or you can take all of them. It's completely up to you. So if you win, say, three and you only want two, the one you don't want, I just put back up and say, look, this one's available again. And someone else that wanted it will come on and say, yep, I'll take it. So it's no pressure. And that's how they work. Um, Lisa, do you think you will ever do normal cotton hand-dyed threads? I know you do satin. I do silk. 
um, and I do two different types of silk thread, which is the matte, which is a very much light cotton, um, if you wanted to try them. Um, and I do the gloss, which is very, very much like silk. It's very slippery. It's really hard to explain. It's like, I, it makes me angry. <laughs> I know that's terrible, but if I've got a little hangnail or something like that and I'm stitching with the gloss one, it gets stuck in your nails and it and it frays and it's I'd say that's real like you need to be a patient stitcher to use that but the matte threads are very very much like cotton they don't feel a lot different and they're really nice to use but I have been asked about cotton and I have done some colors in the cotton so if you're interested let me know and I just dye them on a skein of DMC um, white thread that's how I'll do it. So you'll get the approximately 8 metre skein of overdyed DMC. So if you're interested, let me know. That's not a drama. I'm not going to add it to the site yet because I just at the moment I've got too much going on. I've got to add I've got to add thread packs to the site yet. I've got to add kits. And I've got to add the cotton thread. So I'll just I'll get to that. Um so if you want kits, thread packs, even though they're not on the site, I do do them. You just have to ask. Um, thank you, Christine. Good. That's that's a good subject for next week. Thanks, Rachel. If you ever want to know anything else, just um, put it in the comments and let us let me know, and we can talk about it next time on another video. Um, Thanks, Mayan. Yeah, and that is the sole reason I made it that way because of time zones. And it's not fair being an Aussie to have a, a massive sale like that when half the world's asleep. And, like, I didn't like it when I was um, bidding on other people's fabrics. Like, I missed out on everything because they were doing it while we were fast asleep. So I missed out on everything. So that's the theory behind that. Um yeah, so that's fantastic. So I will leave it there. And next week we'll do threads. And I'll throw in a special code. Um, I will get all the threads out that I sell. So I'll get some of... Um, I won't get all the DMC because that would just be ridiculous. But I'll get out their variegated and their satins, the ones that I have, and the metallics, um, the rainbow gallery, the whisper, which I know I'd say that 90% of people hate with a passion. Um... I'll get the thread works and I'll get my silks and I'll get just whatever I've got here and we'll go through the threads and you can see um, especially the thread works because I noticed and I'm, it's the same with my colours I'm sure and it's the same with my fabrics. The colours on the website that they've given me to put on the website, some of them are not as good as what they are in real life. Like I'm, these thread works threads are amazing and the colours on the website don't do them justice. Um, so that'd be a really good one to go through, um, as well as the cryonics and the different types of cryonics. Um, oh, wow, 4am, that's fantastic that you stayed up. Thank you for watching. Um, next time you don't have to stay up, it'll be on the web, on, on the group, and you can just watch it again when you wake up, so no dramas. But thanks, yeah. So we'll do that. And I just got the message that my phone is on low battery. So that means it must be time to go. Um, and I will talk to you next week. So bye.